Hey guys, and welcome to ECG case series number 10 on Master Your Medics. And this was a case that was given to me by a friend of mine. And on this ECG case, we're going to ask two questions. One is, is this a STEMI or not? And number two, if it is, are you able to identify which vessel is the culprit one? So let's get into this case and see how we do. So this was a 57 year old male with no known history of CAD who actually was uh, on his treadmill at his gym for about 25 minutes or so when he suddenly had this crushing chest pain, was pale, diaphoretic, and bystanders saw him fall backwards off the treadmill striking the ground. They also noted seizure-like activity and uh, you know he was noted to be unresponsive. CPR was started almost immediately. And when paramedics got there, uh, they uh, noted that he was unresponsive and they put him on the monitor and this was his first tracing. Uh, based on this, you know, what do you think the next step should be? Uh, I think they very appropriately thought that this was VTAC, pulseless VTAC. Um, they defibrillated him immediately. He became responsive slowly, but still, you know, quite ill appearing, unable to provide any history at all. Um, and his blood pressure was on the lower side, 105 or 85. Uh, next steps, well, you know, uh, obviously when you look at this, the first most glaring thing is that there are elevations here in both the inferior leads and the lateral precordial leads with uh, ST depressions in lead AVL and the anterior precordial leads, V1, 2, and 3. The ST segments are horizontally depressed, so quite concerning. Um, but before we get into the ST segments and what they mean, um, you know, you ought to definitely go through a quick you know, reminder or checklist of what the differential diagnosis is for ST elevations and depressions. Um, so after you do that, uh, take a look at the ECG and let's just break it down pretty quickly now. Uh, looking at the rate, uh, rate's about 110. Uh, that's easy. The rhythm, well, it's sinus and it's regular. Uh, every QRS, you know, follows a P wave. Uh, and unlike the first strip where it's regular, but there are no discernible P waves, there are P waves here. So this is sinus and it's regular. That's, that's quite reassuring, I think. The axis looks like, well, uh, limb lead one, two, and three are upright, are positive rather. And um, AVR uh, is uh, down and AVF is up. So that kind of goes along with this while pointing to the sort of the bottom left corner uh, about the five o'clock position, making this a normal axis. Great so far. How about intervals? Well, the intervals are, they seem at least that they're within normal limits and kind of magnifying in on some of these here, the PR interval, you know, it's less than 200 milliseconds for sure. It's about 140 milliseconds if you count the boxes out. Uh, the QRS is um, on the narrow side. It's so, you know, not a left funnel branch block, uh, not that wide. And uh, the um, QT interval is, you know, that quick and dirty technique of uh, identifying the normal QTC is whether or not the T wave ends before the midway, the R, R midway point, which it does. So that too is uh, quite reassuring. Uh, now the ST segments, um, absolutely there are elevations in the inferior leads two, three and F show elevations uh, along with uh, elevations in uh, the precordial leads of five and six. And then there are reciprocal depressions in AVL and all of the precordial leads. So that right there has a regional pattern to it and that should be extremely alarming to you. Now, the T waves, the T waves should either be isoelectric in V1 or inverted and never, never taller or bigger than the ones in V6. And in fact here, uh, again, it's quite reassuring. The T wave in V1 is inverted and not bigger than the one in V6. Uh, the voltage, well, this guy was in his mid fifties, right? So if you saw, um, a high voltage, and if you add the S wave in V1 and the R wave in V5, and it was greater than 35 millimeters, well, we'd be concerned about LVH there, right? So it is not. As a matter of fact, it's quite within the range of being normal in voltage. 
And so that too, I think, is um, is pretty reassuring for not this not being high voltage or LVH. And lastly, abnormal you know uh, waves, uh, unusual waves, and notching of waves are really not present. Maybe here you can see some you know some slight notching here, but this just may be the QRS complex trying to become an incomplete block, an incomplete maybe a left block, but really not quite wide enough to call it that as yet. Uh, but remember, these are all dynamic changes. You know, everything is moving. This is an ischemic heart, most likely. So you can expect to see some unusual things as they evolve. Uh, let's focus in now on the ST elevations in the limb leads, specifically limb lead two and three. And what's notable here, what's notable is that the ST elevations, uh, specifically the J point in uh, limb lead two is higher, greater than the one in lead three. So that by itself has some profound meaning, right? So when you see this pattern, when you see the ST elevations in two greater than three and, right, and ST elevations in the lateral precordial leads V5 and V6, you know, one thinks about um, the, the possibility of an infralateral STEMI. Infralateral STEMIs are actually, they present exactly this pattern. And there it is, the uh, culprit vessel most likely is a left circumflex artery. Um, remember that uh, takeaways from this case are that, you know, the left circumflex artery supplies the lateral aspect of the inferior wall. And because of that, you know, you see three things. We see ST elevations in two either equal to lead three or because the net current of injury is in the inferior and lateral aspect, you can sometimes see, as in this case, that the ST elevations in lead two being greater than in lead three. Um, and uh, that in conjunction with ST elevations in the precordial leads V5 and V6 makes this um, quite uh, concerning to be an infralateral STEMI, most likely due to a circumflex occlusion. So um, anyhow, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. This is such Presti for Master of Medics. Please email me comments and questions. So long for now. Until next week.